2024 has been absolutely packed with incredible sneaker releases, and the sneaker release that we're talking about in today's video has been a pair that I've been anticipating all year. And I know this review might be a little bit late, but honestly, better late than never because genuinely, I think this is one of the best sneaker releases of the entire year. What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler, and today I'm reviewing the Trophy Room Air Jordan 1 Low Rookie Coat. Spring is finally here, that means it's time for low top sneakers and mid socks. And this Friday, my sock brand Apothecary are dropping some mids that aren't mid. That was a terrible pun, but these mid socks are fire. Of course, these 2024 mids come in colors that match great with your sneakers. They're incredibly comfortable on foot, and they feature the Apothecary logo on the tag, which I think is an awesome touch personally, not just because I designed it, I just think it's clean. And hey, if you guys want to grab any of the best mid socks ever, make sure to check out our website, apothecary.com, this Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time, linked in the top of the description below. But like I said, springtime is perfect for mid socks and low top sneakers, and this pair of Air Jordan 1 Lows is probably my favorite pair of Air Jordan 1 Lows to drop this year. These, of course, are the latest Trophy Room Air Jordan collaboration. And if you aren't familiar with Trophy Room, Trophy Room is the sneaker boutique started by Michael Jordan's son, Marcus Jordan. It's a Jordan collab that literally keeps it in the family. And that's why I think all of the Trophy Room collaborations have been pretty solid. That being said, personally, I think this is my favorite pair of Trophy Room collab sneakers to drop. My second favorite is actually the Trophy Room 5s that dropped a couple years back. The Trophy Room 1 highs were great, but there's a lot of controversy around them. And I just didn't like them as much as a regular pair of Chicago's. These, on the other hand, really changed things up. And the materials on this shoe are absolutely amazing. Plus, the packaging and the inspiration behind this shoe is incredible. I don't usually care about inspiration for sneakers. Obviously, I talk about it because I review sneakers, but it's not something that usually determines whether I buy a sneaker or not. But in the case of this shoe, it definitely adds a lot to the sneaker. But we'll get into all of that later on in the review. First, let's talk about the release of this shoe. So the Rookie Guard Trophy Room Air Jordan 1 Lows first released at Trophy Room in Orlando on March 14th for a retail price of 140 bucks, And then we got the wider release through the sneakers app on March 21st, again, for the same retail price of 100 40 bucks. And from what I can tell, it seems like the best chance you had to get this pair of sneakers was to actually enter the in-store raffle at the Trophy Room store in Orlando. I mean, people did hit on the sneakers app and they also hit on the online raffle for these shoes from Trophy Room, but most of the pairs seemingly went out to people who were actually at the store, which honestly, I'm not mad at. Plus, it also seems like the release of this shoe was incredibly fair. I'm sure you guys are familiar with some of the previous releases that Trophy Room has had and some of the controversy that surrounded those releases, but in this case, it seems like everything went as smoothly as it could possibly go. Now, unfortunately, because I live in Philadelphia, the chances of me getting this pair for retail were basically zero, which means that I did have to pay resale for this shoe. I think I spent like $550 after fees on GOAT. And of course, if you want to grab a pair of these now, you do have to pay resale because all the releases of this shoe are over. And if you guys do want to grab these shoes for resale, make sure to leave an affiliate link through the YouTube shopping tab on your screen and in the description below. But this shoe for me was a must cop. I was willing to pay about what I paid for it. I probably wouldn't have paid any more for it, but honestly, I think the shoe is worth the $550. And I'll get more into that later on in the video, but I'm not mad at the price that I paid. I mean, it sucks, don't get me wrong, but I'm not gonna regret it. Now, as I'm sure most of you already know, the inspiration behind this shoe was the Fleer 1986 Michael Jordan rookie card, which is the most popular basketball card of all time and one of the most coveted basketball cards of all time. Graded originals of this card have gone anywhere from $10,000 up to $700,000, depending on the PSA grade. And as a basketball card fan myself, it was a card that I always aspired to have but could never have. And so for me, I think that's one of the reasons why I love this collaboration so much because I grew up loving basketball cards and collecting basketball cards and also collecting sneakers. And so this shoe is just a mashup of those two things and it's also created by the son of Michael Jordan, the GOAT. So I'm all about this shoe, man. I love it. I think this shoe is incredible. And speaking of incredible, so is the packaging. The thought that went into the packaging of this shoe is next level. So the outside of the box comes in this sort of off-white or cream-colored cardboard. It's designed to look like the box that the card packs came in. You've got the Nike logo on the top of the box in red designed to look like it's aged. You've also got more aged Nike logos around the outside of the box, all in different states of where each Nike logo is slightly different because of the way that it's worn on the outside of the box, which I, I think is incredible. The attention to detail on this box is stupid. I love it. Getting back to the top of the box, you've got Michael Jordan's signature on the right hand side in blue. You've got the Trophy Room logo also in blue. These are both in the style of the Fleer box. And then you've got the words official edition written underneath the Nike logo also in blue. And then around the bottom of the box, you've got the red and blue and red lines. I was born in 92, so I missed out on the 1986 Fleer packs, but I do know about them and I did really appreciate them and always want 
cards from those packs. I just never got any. Then on the front of the box, we've got the size tag. I grabbed a size nine, which is my true size. Obviously, because I'm planning to keep this pair and wear this pair, I went with my true size. The official name of the shoe is Air Jordan 1 Retro Low OGSP, and the colorway is Sail Black Varsity Red Muslin. Now, the awesome detailing of the box doesn't end here. On the inside of the lid, you've got some more hits. You've got the Jumpman logo, and then the Chicago Skyline in blue at the bottom of the top of the lid. And then moving inside the box, you've got another packaging detail. You've got this clear plastic box, or I guess sleeve box, that allows you to see through to the paper underneath. And the paper is so cool because it's inspired by the actual packs. I'm so happy that they went with this sort of clear packaging so you can see the paper. Now in the original Fleer 1986 packs, you'd not only get some cards, but you'd also get a sticker and some bubble gum. And they designed this paper to look like you're getting multiple things inside this package. So you get one pair of shoes and two extra lace sets, which I love. Obviously the design of this is a little bit different than the actual card packs because instead you've got sneakers inside and not cards. But it does have that same vibe. You've got the same colors, the light blue, the red, the cream. You've got the trophy room logo at the bottom. You've got just so many cool hits that make this such a unique package. The last time I was this excited about packaging from Jordan brand, I think was the Lost and Found Ones, which also featured a lot of really cool hidden details in the packaging, stuff that you wouldn't see unless you actually own the shoes. And this is the same case with the trophy room ones. But hey, with the packaging out of the way, let's finally get into the sneakers. So the first thing that you might notice about this shoe is the actual color blocking and how it's sort of a reverse black toe color blocking. Usually on a black toe Air Jordan 1, the red is on the heel of the shoe and the black is on the toe of the sneaker, hence the name black toe. In fact, here's a pair of black toe ones just for reference. But the other thing that I noticed about this shoe when I finally got it in hand was the material quality. It's amazing. So starting off around the toe of the sneaker on the mud guard, you've got this bright red satin material. And I think that a lot of people are sort of mixed on satin being used on Air Jordan sneakers. Yes, it does have this beautiful gloss sort of glisten to it, which I absolutely love. And I think it does feel a little bit more premium than some of the other materials that Jordan brand tends to use on their shoes, but it creases in kind of an odd way. For example, here are my satin bread ones, a shoe that I've only worn probably two or three times, but you've already got this pretty deep crease down the toe of the sneaker. Now I will say that because this shoe only features the satin on the mud guard of the shoe, at least in the areas that it would crease. It shouldn't be as bad as this shoe, but it's something to keep in mind. In fact, actually looking at the mudguard on this shoe, the satin areas, there isn't really any creasing, so it might actually be okay. That being said, I do understand that some people might feel apprehensive about having satin on their expensive Air Jordan 1 lows, but I do think the material does add to the sneaker, especially that sort of glossy look and uh, does make it feel a bit more premium. Speaking of premium, moving to the center of the toe, you've got this beautiful sort of light cream colored nubuck. I've heard a lot of people call this leather, and while yes, that's true, nubuck is leather, this is definitely more of a nubuck because it's got that sort of um, felty finish. But in my opinion, this nubuck feels way more premium than the nubuck that you usually see on Air Jordan sneakers, and definitely more premium than that plasticky leather that you usually get on Air Jordan sneakers. I love it, man. I don't know how it's gonna crease, but I think it looks amazing. It also smells amazing too. It doesn't smell like glue, like most other Air Jordan ones. It smells like an actual leather shoe, which is crazy. You don't usually get that with Jordans. Continuing up to the eye stay of the sneaker, you've got more of that red satin material. And of course you've got the trophy room logo embroidered into the lateral side. It comes in a matching red color. So it's kind of a subtle hit, but I really dig that. You really only see it when you catch the shoe in the right light. It's such a nice subtle hit, but it does add a lot to the side of the sneaker. One detail that I really love about this shoe are the metal eyelets that you find on the side of the sneaker. Again, they make the shoe feel much more expensive than a standard pair of Air Jordan 1 lows, and then weaving through the eyelets, at least when you first get the shoe, you get these black flat wax laces. Now, as it says in the packaging, you do also get two other sets of laces. You get a set of white laces and a set of yellow laces. And while yes, I do love the way that the black laces look on this shoe, for some reason, I'm really drawn to those yellow laces. I don't know why, but I think I'm gonna switch out to the yellow laces after I film this review, just because I think it's gonna look sick. I also think the yellow would go great with the sort of Easter vibe that I'm going for this Sunday at church. I think it's gonna look amazing. Pastor Aaron, shout out to you. He always notices my sneakers, but man, this shoe is so fire. I'm so excited to rock this. I'm planning to rock this as much as I possibly can. Underneath the laces, you've got this really shiny sort of cream colored fabric tongue. It's not actually the same material that you usually have on Air Jordan 1 tongues. And it's also actually more padded than most other Air Jordan 1 tongues, at least from what I can tell but I do like it a lot. At the top of the tongue, you've got a red tag with your Nike Air branding in white. And then moving inside the sneaker, you've got the same material that you had on the tongue of the shoe around the sock liner of the shoe. And as with most of the other materials on this shoe, this material does feel more premium than what you usually have in Air Jordan sneakers. And it makes me feel a little bit better about spending as much as I did on this shoe. Rounding off the inside of the shoe, you've got mismatching insoles. You've got a yellow insole on the right shoe with the trophy room logo on the heel. And on the left shoe, you've got a light blue insole with the Jumpman logo on the heel. Those colors again come from the Fleer rookie card. And one thing that I kind of wish they had done differently on this shoe that they actually did on the home version of the shoe, because technically there's two versions of this shoe. This is the away colorway and there's also a home colorway. On the home version of the shoe, which comes with the white Nike swoosh, you've actually got blue and yellow accents on the edges of the panels on the upper of the shoe. Now, 
obviously you can't really do that with uh, this satin upper. You can only really do that with leather, which makes me think that the upper of that shoe is leather instead of satin. It's a detail that I really wish they had included on this shoe in some way because the blue and the yellow is kind of my favorite part of the shoe and you don't really get to see it when you're wearing the sneaker. But that's just my own personal opinion. I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that prefer just the simple black, white, and red look. But at this point, let's get into sizing and fit. And as you probably expected, these shoes fit just like every other pair of Air Jordan 1 Lows. For me, that's true to size, but for you, it might be something different. So if you're grabbing a pair of these, I would suggest trying on a pair of Air Jordan 1 Lows. It doesn't have to be this colorway. Just to make sure that you're grabbing the right size for you if you've never owned a pair of Air Jordan 1s before because you're spending a lot of money on this shoe and that would suck to get it in and realize it doesn't fit. But honestly, if you're not able to do that, you should be fine going true to size on this shoe. So that's what I would recommend. But again, it's better to try it on first before you buy it. I got my pair in a size nine, which is my true size and it fits me great. So again, I'd recommend true to size. Continuing back in the shoe to the midfoot, you've got more of that really nice light gray tumbled nubuck, which feels amazing to the touch. And then embroidered into that material, you've got this black Nike swoosh. Now, normally I'm not a fan of embroidered Nike swooshes. I did really like the Edison Chen mids that released back in 2020 that also had an embroidered Nike swoosh, but that Nike swoosh sort of faded out as you got towards the heel of the shoe, which I thought looked amazing. On this shoe, I actually don't mind it that much because it does give this Nike swoosh a bit of three dimensionality. It kind of bulges off the side of the shoe and gives it a little bit more interest, which is cool. Not mad at it. Plus the threads also are kind of glossy, so they shine a little bit, which does add something else to the sneaker as well. Continuing back on the sneaker, you get to this black woven material that covers the entire heel of the shoe. At first I thought it was corduroy, but seeing it in person, it kind of looks more woven than corduroy. So I'm not sure exactly what it is but uh, it's a nice material change up, not mad at it. On the lateral side of the heel, you've got Michael Jordan's logo embroidered into the material in a matching black, which sort of camouflages it, making it kind of a hidden detail, which I, I really love. And then finally, rounding off the heel, you've got this gold metallic wings logo, which again, adds to the premium feel of the shoe. I know the metal is not actually gold or probably even that expensive at all, but uh, it does make the shoe feel more expensive, especially more so than a printed Wings logo, which is what we usually get on uh, Air Jordan sneakers. So very, very nice touch. Plus the gloss kind of makes it glisten, which I think is cool. Oh, and also the contrast that this gold creates on the black is very, very cool. Moving down on the sneaker, you get to this off-white colored midsole, which seems to be just a trend now that's happening on most limited edition Jordan ones. Not mad at it though, I think it's a nice touch. And then finally on the bottom of the shoe, you've got this red rubber outsole. So I might sound like a hype beast saying this, but uh, I'm being honest. This is probably my favorite release of the year, at least my favorite personal pickup. There are some other really great releases this year. There are some shoes that I've really liked, like the Bread 4s and the Military Blue 4s and some upcoming Travis's and stuff like that. But this shoe took me by surprise. I knew I was gonna like it, because obviously it's a Jordan 1 Low and I love Jordan 1s and I love the colorway, but just having the shoe in hand and feeling the materials for myself and seeing the packaging for myself really just pushed it over the edge for me. I mean, even the quality of the construction, the stitching looks perfect. There is like one tiny glue mark, but that's about it. It's much better than most other Jordan sneakers. The colorway is amazing, the materials are amazing, the story behind the shoe is amazing. This shoe is a 10 for me, an absolute 10. But at this point, I would love to know your thoughts on the Trophy Room Air Jordan 1 Low Rookie Cards. Whether you were able to grab a pair for yourself, whether you had to pay resale for this pair, or whether you just don't care about the sneaker, let me know all those thoughts in the comment section down below. Once again, make sure to check out my sock brand linked in the top of the description below. While you're at it, actually, check out my tech channel too, which is also linked in the description below. Drop videos there at least once a week. We're actually like a couple thousand subscribers away from 100,000, which is just a huge milestone for me. So I'd love it if you guys subscribe to that channel. And I realize I'm asking a lot of you guys now, but if you guys haven't subscribed, to this channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button, hit the like button if you like this video, and I will see you all in the next one.